I'm Eric Henry, the Senior Visual Effects Supervisor for Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I'm Jeff White, the ILM Visual Effects Supervisor for Percy Jackson. I just want to say, how awesome was it for you to be in the room with so many people who were just like ex so excited about this project? Uh, yeah, obviously, for me, the, the energy put me at ease, you know, because we don't public speak all that often. Um, so that was that was uh, really, you know, kind of energizing. And uh, and then at the end, there were people who came up to Jeff and I, and just the genuine um, sort of love for the work, the 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 books, and saying, and you guys got it right from what they had seen. They felt like it, you know, the the kids looked right. The visual effects were, you know, spot on what they expected, and uh, and hopefully more than that. Uh, but that also is kind of like, whoa! I'm I'm really feeling like this is special. Um, so, yeah, it, the the crowd was a, an important part of the success of the day for sure. Uh, they made it easy for us. Yeah, <laughs> I had to record some of the crowd because really I'm just like a front person for the hundreds of artists and production folks and everybody that like pours their heart into the work and for them to get us to see the kind of reception that it gets is, is amazing. Um, it's always the fun part of working on a show like this that has such a strong fan base. I uh, really enjoy it. Hi, so I just interviewed you a couple weeks ago. I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, for another show. Um, so we saw the we saw a lot of cool scenes, but we saw the Minotaur scene today, and I was wondering if you guys could talk about, from a VFX perspective, what, what that looked like, because yeah. that was like, super cool and super intense in the car. Um, what was it like actually planning that and making it you know, look like it looks? Um, uh, this is, you know, uh, we said a little bit about it in the, um, in the, in the uh, panel, but uh, I think that the Minotaur, because it is so important to everyone, we had to, I don't know how many discussions we had about the underpants, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. and, and what happens when they get wet, yeah. uh, you know, what happens, they're going to get dirty, um, you know, are they dirty enough, and uh, it, it, then they became too gray, and it's like, well, we got to be, they got to pop out, yeah. so, um, you know, those are kind of the interesting discussions where you turn to yourself, uh, to your colleagues and say, <laughs> this is a weird discussion we're having. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, adding anything to you know the complexity of it. I mean, Jeff's team is the one who uh, brought it to to screen, and um, there's there's some amazing shots. Uh, I was asked recently, like, what my favorite shot was, um, and it's definitely one of the you know hero moments when the Minotaur is um, you know uh, Percy gets on top and snaps the horn off and then the camera move that we came up with is is really dynamic you move around the the face and he's in pain and so his mouth the minotaur's mouth opens up as you come by and then um, he puts the horn in and as everyone knows who's read the book uh, that makes him dissolve and and then Percy falls through it. All of that dynamic work is just beautiful. And ILM's team, uh, headed by Jeff here and Jose, <laughs> yep. um, just amazing. Uh, you know, to me, that's it's framed with the tree and the background and the moonlight. Yeah. It's it's perfect. It's a perfect shot. One of the things that I loved about working with Eric and John and Dan was that like they th there's there can be a temptation I think with the fight with the CG creature where it's just so fantastic that it's, it starts to not feel real anymore. Like there's no stakes and you never feel like there's any danger. And we spent a lot of time carefully crafting this sequence so you actually felt like Percy was in real danger and when the moment happens with his mom, like it's very emotional uh, in the in the show. So I think that, that part of it was like almost more of a focus than just executing the creature, which which I thought, in the end, made it feel a lot more realistic. Yeah. 
Um, so we haven't gotten to see a lot of it yet because I know it's sort of it's a, you know a big reveal in the story. But water is a very important part of Percy's character. So can you guys tell us a little bit about the the water effects that we're going to see? Um, let's see, uh, uh, Jeff. Um, I'll let you handle uh, his kind of first foray into it, um, which is uh, a little in the uh, bathroom scene. Uh, oh yeah, I guess uh, uh, we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking the one that we oh, did yeah. see, you know, yeah. with uh, so Nancy cuts, Boba Fett. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, the the first time you start to you start to get a hint of like who, who Percy is is that scene with Nancy, and and it's very subtle. And I don't know if you saw it in the clip there, but uh, when when Percy approaches her, there's actually water tentacles that grab her from the back, and we kind of kept it intentionally. Like they they look exactly the same as all the rest of the water from the fountain which actually we had to recreate the met fountains and we learned a lot about them like <laughs> they go through a like substantial amount of water uh, they're able to pump through those things so the fact that we were able to recreate it on our set was uh, really phenomenal yeah Joel and uh, oh. the special effects uh, team uh, you know the what went into making that fountain is uh, is, is a stunning achievement yeah. uh, as he told us and we had to shrink it a little bit because it didn't quite the actual one is so big there's two uh, that we had to shrink it to make it fit on the volume yeah and the, I think the actual one was like 50 million dollars so that would have used up almost <laughs> our entire production budget right. <laughs> for visual effects so yeah you have to you have to you know make some cheats but I think throughout like we we always tried to anytime you do magic it's quite tough you know it's uh, it can be a lot of exploration how do we make this feel natural and I I think that's where we just had a lot of back and forth discussions in terms of how Percy starts to harness the power of the water and it builds over the course of the show uh, so that it, it you get to the point where you feel like yes that's one of his powers but but it doesn't look like a weird you know mystical thing it still feels very grounded how much room was there for like I mean, this is going to sound ridiculous but like actual creativity because you, you have like the source material that you're drawing all this inspiration from and then you have these Greek figures and, and creatures that people already have, kind of have like an idea of what they should look like yeah. right? like the Minotaur right uh, Medusa so like how much freedom did you guys have in like, creating them for like the audience like to experience my action for some the first time yeah mm -hmm. so much like that that's the hard part is like you have amazing source material on the page but it's still like but what is that look like in real life and and I think like the Minotaur is a good example where it was just one illustrator that came up with the idea of using like a Brahma bull uh, as, as a way to kind of shift Minotaurs into a little bit of a different language because they have those uh, floppy ears that hang down right so it's part of like how do we make this thing scary and a threat to Percy but not so scary that all the kids go screaming from the room <laughs> and, and, and give a character yeah um, and give a character uh, John and Dan were really keen to have it be <clears throat> have a backstory um, you know like okay so it's got pierced ears you know someone someone did that you know it's it did it so that it seems like it's more like a badass um, and you know those are the kind of things that John and Dan um, are so helpful because they have a take they are not the, those kind of showrunners who just say I yeah. don't know yeah um, it, very specific and always uh, they always have some reference some point of reference where you can go oh kind of like this wrestler you know pull up a picture and so yeah uh, it, creativity comes from you know sitting with uh, those two for 10 minutes and all of a sudden you're riffing on ideas and, and it's where we came up with uh, you know the fact that it wasn't going to run when it's standing on two legs because it just is more threatening if it's on all fours running at you like a yeah. steam train um, and then yeah when it stands up uh, that's more combat mode and and you know swinging and grabbing uh, happens when that's when that's going on holds Sally up and finally uh, crushes her 